today we're going to do something crazy. Yes, we're going to hose down a perfectly good monitor. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a good idea, right? Water and, and, and electrics together? Hmm, don't normally mix, but I've been assured that it's safe and it, and it is indeed safe and there's been plenty of people that uh, that do swear by this and do do it. So we're going to give it a go today and of course the main thing is is you make sure that the monitor isn't on. <laughs> and it's also been secure, you know, grounded and all the electrics are out of it. So make sure you do that first. You want a fairly warm day uh, to do this so that you can, you know, do the cleaning and, and uh, spray it all down and then really leave it out in the, in the sun and the hot air to start drying out. Definitely don't want to uh, re uh, set it up and plug it in prematurely it's got to be absolutely solidly dry and so a lot of people do actually leave it for you know two three four days uh, after they've done it to make sure that it's absolutely dry some people use hair dryers to sort of dry it off a little bit just be careful of course because of the high heat of those uh, but basically you want to make sure that it's bone dry before you turn it back on obviously ground it first before you uh, do anything else once you've done that you'd remove the chassis Okay, so normally you'd have your earthing cable uh, from the bottom of the chassis connected to your cabinet and obviously I had the monitor out of the cabinet already so I had this uh, while I was testing it I just had this earthing cable hooked back through to the earth of the cabinet but normally you would remove this earthing cable uh, as you move remove the monitor in the first place the next thing we're going to do is remove this plug uh, which is the main RGB sync and ground cable as well as the AC in so this is a uh, Nano MS8 FSG uh, chassis and again you know it may be slightly different on your particular model uh, but effectively you'll definitely have some RGB inputs coming in from the cab so you need to remove that once that's removed you can then pinch this Molex, so that just comes through the back like so. The next thing you'll need to do is uh, the chassis itself will normally be screwed down. So this one I currently don't have screwed in because I just got it back as I said from repair so I've just plonked it in here for testing purposes. Once you do that you'll be able to move the chassis out when we're ready to do so. So the next thing that we're going to do is we'll unplug this connector here which goes off to the tube and get, just take note of the, the way, the order that this particular plug is in. This does affect the picture including the orientation. Now sometimes I've seen on some monitors where this is a four pin plug and sometimes it's split between the four so you've got uh, you know two plugs with two wires each and uh, that just allows different orientation of the of the screen depending on how it's been mounted in your cabinet so if your screen is reversed or upside down then typically this will be the uh, plug that you need to change so if everything's sweet as it is just make a note of the colors and the orientation that it is in and as i said there may be one or two plugs to remove here Okay, and that one's off. The next one we're going to do is the uh, earthing cable on the back of the neck board. But what we can do first is we can just wiggle off the neck board first. And so to do that, you want to be really careful with the back here because this is very delicate. And if you break this, then effectively your monitor is no good anymore. Okay, so we're going to carefully wiggle off the neck board. Give it a little wiggle and it should just slide off the back. Don't force it. Take your time. And there we go. Now once that neck board is off, then there's just that one little cable there that needs to be removed. Connects through to the tube. And that's it. There's one final cable that we need to get to on this particular chassis, which is at the back. So I'll just move the chassis forward and then we can get, get to it. So to move the, to remove this on this particular one, it's actually pinned under by some metal tabs at the back. So you sort of have to, once you get the screws out, you slide it forward and then the whole board will, will come out. 
Now one other thing that I need to do here is I need to disconnect the anode. So we have this currently cable tied up here and it should always be cable tied like this so it's suspended in the air like that. That's the correct way of having it. So I'm going to just uh, cut that cable tie off. Right, and there's one final cable at the back here for the degaussing circuit. So that particular plug just needs to be unplugged as well. And that's it guys. Now you can remove your chassis completely. Just be careful as you do so that none of the cables get caught like this one has at the moment. So we'll just release that and then we can take the chassis out and that way we can give both of these a, a really good clean separately but as I said you can do it all together keep it in the chassis if you want but you can see there's quite a bit of grime underneath uh, the, the chassis plate here so we can really get to that so let's get it all outside and start spraying it down so guys you can see the dirt on the back of this monitor here the back of the tube absolutely filthy look at that all the way down onto the neck so we'll get that all cleaned up <clears throat> now the chassis was actually a lot worse than it is uh, because it was just sent to repair Joey did a nice job of actually giving it giving it a good clean up because this was absolutely filthy especially in this area here it was bl totally blacked up so he's cleaned a lot of that uh, the cable is still a little bit dirty uh, but it won't hurt to give this a, a once over as well so I'll get the simple green out and the water running and let's get started. Right, we are ready to go. Now one thing to note is uh, I always thought that it would uh, maybe get water in here somehow through the anode cap when the anode cap's off, but no, you can do this with the anode cap off, no problems at all. So let's give it a good spray with simple green first. And Get it all over here. A really good drenching. And some of the stickers may come off, so you just got to be wary of that. And when you do use the hose, you don't want to do high pressure hosing. And the back of this tube has got a covering called an aqua dag, and that can come off if you go too heavy on the spray although I believe that's more of a problem with the older monitors especially like the black and whites so if you use extreme care for extreme care if you're using older monitors okay that's giving that a good drench and a sore hand squeezing this now I'll get all this completely covered up Alright, we're ready to give it some gentle water. We've also got a paintbrush here too, so we can use that. You need to take off some of this additional muck up here. Yeah, it's a beautiful warm day today, as I said, so perfect day for cleaning monitors. And see all that gunk has come straight off. Use the paintbrush to help some of that clean that off. Can really come up nice and clean there now. there we go guys all clean so there you have it that's how to clean your monitor and i tell you what if i get any more monitors out of the machines that i have every time i'm going to do that little cleaning trick you may as well while the monitors are out as heavy as they are it's nice to get them nice and clean if you clean up everything else in your cabinet 
why not make your monitor nice and pristine and new again and if you liked the video and it was useful to you then give me a thumbs up if you can that'd be fantastic please subscribe and uh, tell your friends and all that good stuff and until next time take care ciao for now